everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. I'm your host, James Murphy, AKA Murph. And yes, welcome back to another one. What's going on, everybody? I am gassed, I'm exhausted from drill, but I, of course, I still had to put out this video. So in this video, I'm going to be listing the top five places in New England that you need to visit, whether you live in New England, visiting New England, or not even from the area remotely. These are the five places that you need to visit, okay? I do have a disclaimer though. <clears throat> I did not include Acadia National Park on this list because I have not been there personally. I have not, I've been to Maine once, so I can't say that I was even remotely close to Acadia Park. And I just don't feel like it's fair that if I put Acadia on my top five list, if I've never visited personally or have any experience there at all. So that is a disclaimer. If I ever go there, I will absolutely update this top five list and throw it in there if applicable. Applicable. <laughs> Starting off, number five, Lake Winnewasaki in New Hampshire. Uh, I basically grew up in that area. Uh, my family had. My family and I had a second house out there and it was absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. The lake was beautiful. It was gorgeous, whether it was summertime and people were out there fishing and swimming or if it was frozen during the winter and people were ice fishing or even snowmobiling across the lake. Anyways, scenic mountains and views of just absolutely organic nature. Dinner cruises, fishing, beaches. The area is so fun with restaurants on the water. Uh, you have Fun Spot that's close by. The, it's the world's largest arcade. If you've never been there, that you have to go to. It's not on my list, but you should go there as well. Uh, where was I? There's drive-in theaters, camping, boating, beachfront arcades, go-karts, ice creams, among so much more. It is truly a fun and or a relaxing atmosphere, and it's some place that you need to visit to in New England. Number four. Cape Cod and the Islands. I think it's kind of self-explanatory, but I'll still go over it. Uh, it is famous for touring and people vacationing as a getaway from their reality. It is full of amazing beach coastline up and down the Cape and on both islands, Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. It's a, there's a plethora of museums on both the Cape and the Islands as well. Uh, it's an old school style of feel in Sandwich, Hyannis, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, Falmouth, and many more locations up and down the Cape and the Islands where you just have that old school vintage feel of local family owned businesses, just a lot of nostalgia in the entire area, whether it's the Cape or the Islands. Whale watching all throughout the Cape and the Islands. You have Buzzards Bay, Martha's Vineyard, I'm sorry, Vineyard Sound, Nantucket Sound, uh, up and down the Cape Cod itself, the body of water Cape Cod, tremendous. I actually went whale watching one time with my family two years ago, yeah, it was before COVID, so two years ago, and I got, <laughs> I got seasick big time. Me personally, I get a little ooh, like car sick and motion sickness, but he let me tell you, I got blasted in terms of motion and seasickness when I went whale watching. It was so unenjoyable. I could give two flying fucks about whales. I just wanted to get back on land and just refine myself, seriously. Um, moving to number three. Uh, and a uh, quick note, if you see me keep looking over here, I'm looking at my computer with my little notes because obviously I had to write the notes down because otherwise I'd probably have something where it shouldn't be and forget a certain point. So please do excuse my, uh, myself looking over here. Anyways, number three, bang, 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 bang. Basketball Hall of Fame, Springfield, Massachusetts. No, I'm not saying this because I'm biased and that I went to school in Springfield. I'm saying this because it's a fact. The Basketball Hall of Fame might be the best Hall of Fame. I don't know if it is because I haven't seen the Football Hall of Fame yet, but it is, it is up there. It is up there. Every single basketball great, legend, uh, just about every player and coach, honestly, anyone who's touched a basketball gets inducted to the Hall of Fame. They're all honored there. Think of anybody that has played the game before, and they're probably in there except the 90, 1990s plumbers that Michael Jordan were, <clears throat> were playing against. There's full of knowledge of things you either did know or didn't know, a bunch of different relics of historic jerseys, pieces of court, old basketballs, old 
hoops that they used to use during the games. It's just amazing how much physical, physical hist pieces of history that they have in the Hall of Fame. It's incredible. Plus, 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 plus. There's interactive activities in games throughout the entire Hall of Fame. There's even actual a court inside the building to shoot on with different styles of hoops that we've seen throughout the NBA. Uh, what Just basketball in general, not even the NBA. So whether it's the peach, the first peach basket that James Naismith used on Springfield College for his football athletes to use as a workout during the winter, they have that hoop you can shoot on. When it was just a hoop and no backboard, they have that you can shoot on. And then obviously the many different shapes and forms that uh, basketball hoop and backboard have taken shape over the course of history you can shoot on there plus a full length regulation high school court it it is what it is um number two some people might agree with this some people might not but i put the newport mansions on here as number two and for those that don't know the newport mansions they are uh, mansions in newport rhode island <laughs> simple enough right there's 11 old school slash old fashioned mansions along the Newport coastline. They were built all across the 1800s, originally served as summer homes for wealthy tycoons of New York and Pennsylvania. And for those that may not know, a tycoon is a, a businessman who, you know, makes their money through sales and deals and all that good stuff. Hopefully, I mean, I don't know, I wasn't around then, obviously. Hopefully it was all legal, but never know. <laughs> <laughs> Eight out of the 11 mansions are open to the public as of now for tours. And of those eight mansions, uh, they also serve as museums along with being able to simply tour them. The Preservation Society of Newport County owns those eight mansions, allowing us visitors, consumers, guests, whoever, to be able to go and visit any of those eight mansions that we wish to see. All of them are different, built differently, look differently on the inside and outside. So every single one's gonna give you a different experience. It is a true historic piece of not only New England, but American history and simply a fascinating sight to see if you're visiting New England. And number one, number one. For those of you who haven't guessed it yet, what are you doing? And if you kind of already guessed it, good job. But this one is Fenway Park. Yes, the home of the Boston Red Sox. America's most beloved ballpark takes the cake for the number one site to see here in New England. The famous Fenway Frank saying originated here. Duh, Fenway Franks, uh, Franks hot dogs, Fenway Park. Whenever you hear the term Fenway Frank, think of Fenway Park. Just about every legend, Hall of Famer, great player, current player, your favorite player, have all played at Fenway Park. And if a current player hasn't, they soon will. Because whenever they play the Red Sox, they're playing at Fenway Park. It is the oldest baseball stadium and the second oldest active sporting venue in the United States of America. Fenway Park was built and constructed in 1912. Like I said, the oldest baseball stadium, and it is the second oldest active sporting venue behind Churchill Downs in Louisiana, Kentucky, which is used for horse racing. Lastly, lastly, the expression green monster. Yeah, that's because it's a huge 37 foot wall that extends from left field to left center that literally robs a million hitters of home runs. Or maybe it may give them home runs depending on how the balls hit. If it's just like a little a little poop fly, uh, poop fly. <laughs> it might, you know, get in the first row of the monsters. Otherwise, it would have been a fly ball out anywhere else. But yes, it is the tallest wall in Major League Baseball, standing at 20, uh, 37 feet high. Absolutely incredible. Incredible, not only a sporting venue, but just piece of history and a beautiful sight that you need to see. Like I said, these five places need to be seen here in New England if you're living here or visiting here. Lake Winnemusaki at number five, uh, the Cape and the Islands at number four, the Basketball Hall of Fame at number three, Newport Mansions at number two, and Fenway Park at number one. This is just my opinion. This is my list, of course. I have my own thoughts and opinions about it. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions about it, so leave that 
down in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video as that would be greatly appreciated. And of course, if you're new or haven't considered subscribing yet, please do so as that would also mean the world to me. Thank you so much for joining and I will catch you in the next one. But until then, see ya. Look at the poor carts. It's like a grocery cart accident. There's like BJ's, Home Depot, uh, Big Y. I don't even know what other stores are over there, but look at There's probably at least 15 shopping carts over there.